Hello and welcome to Fill in the Blanks, a live literary mashup game at the Montana Book Festival, sponsored by a &E Design in downtown Missoula, Montana Public Radio, and the Whitefish Review. Brief housekeeping. If you are watching this, congratulations, you did it. You are in, think, those of you on the Zoom webinar itself, please use the chat to say chatty things if you want to chat. Please reserve the Q&A function for tech support questions. This is a really unusual uh, book festival event. We won't have a traditional Q&A, but anyway, um, tech support to the Q&A, chat for the chat. Uh, and thank you to our Montana Book Festival staff at hand for assisting with, with all that kind of stuff. Those of you watching via the YouTube live stream, welcome to and send a link to millions of friends right now. Uh, the game is afoot. So our panelists today, we have three fabulous and best-selling contemporary sci-fi and fantasy authors. You know them, you love them, you have at least reviewed their capsule event bios, none of which hilariously mention their new books by name. So I want to plug those amazing and beautiful books. We've got from Hugh Howie, an awesome new boxed set of the Silo series with bonus exclusive essays and short stories. Welcome, Hugh. Yes. He is, he is both at sea and in a bunker. Uh, from Hank Green, uh, his new book is A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor. Yes, yes. Hello, Hank. Gwen Nix. It's got Sharks of the Wasteland. I think it is freshest off the press. Is it still hot in your hands, Gwen? So hot. Yeah. Yes. It has a burning. Okay. <laughs> so please uh, click now to the official Montana Book Festival bookseller, factandfictionbooks.com. Scoop their books up. And while you're at it, you can go to montanabookfestival.com and grab all our official swag in its finest forms. Now the game. It's happening so fast. Most author events are readings. We're flipping this one. It is a writing. And you, the audience, will be writing along with them. Then you and their creations, everyone's participating. Everyone. That's right. I'm talking to you, YouTube. You and your creations will get partially blanked out and filled in with new words from their books, Mad Lib style, but don't worry about that yet at all. I have not even explained it to the authors. We're all just rolling with this. Thank you for being good sport, everyone. For now, please just get ready to write. Authors, audience, everyone, split your screens, open a new window you can write in. Word, Google Docs, your email, whatever. So have a space to write. Really, do not sit on your hands if you are watching this. You will want to have done this. It will be five minutes of your life and you will have co-written a story with these amazing authors. Hugh, are you ready? Sure. <laughs> My cursor is blinking. It's, wait it's, it's waiting on me. We're going to do the thing that writers ha hate to do most, which is write. But right, we're right doing now. it in a new scenario, which is while being watched. Uh, <laughs> Hank, are you ready? I suppose I am. Thank you. I have a friend who does this wild thing where he actually writes his novels in live streams. Okay. So like, if you watch all of his live streams, you like just get to read the novel before it comes out. And I never, uh, never accepted that it was a possible thing that, that someone <laughs> could possibly do. But I guess here I will go do it. It's like uh, Tolstoy's version of Twitch. I love it. Um, Gwen, are you ready? My hands are sweaty. I'm ready. Though. Okay, oh, no, that's yes. right. That's, that's the right way to be. Okay, <laughs> audience, get ready. Here's round one. Don't let us down. You better do it too. For the next 
five minutes. Please describe your most recent alien abduction. Mm. Right from any perspective you want, including the aliens. I turned off my view so I couldn't see me. Gwen, can can it be seen by the by by the world yes. or what do I need to? You're okay. good. I see it. I see it. All right. There it is. There it is. If you need the prompt again, one tip for the game. It will be a little bit easier later if you write rather floridly. That is with not just nouns <laughs> and that. verbs, but also adjectives, adverbs, etc. Right. If you already stumped, started, Hugh, what are you doing? Are you writing yeah, already? Hugh, Hugh, yeah. Yeah. Are we, are we supposed to write? You're starting. <laughs> Do whatever you want. No, don't listen to me. Oh, oh God. God. I've got the whole stop. The I'm whole story giving, is fully formed in my mind right I'm now. I'm just giving tips. I'm just <laughs> giving tips. Can I tell you my first sentence is this is no, why no. you never. No, is, <laughs> no, it's a secret. Not yet. It's got Not Hank's yet. name in it. I want to, no. I just want to, it's a short sentence. Okay. I can't okay. Share. If you're well, stumped, we'll out start, enough. if you're stumped, I always recommend if you're stumped, it was a dark and stormy night. Right. Yes. You know, I, I told that to Madeline Lingle a few years ago. She really ran with it. So uh, keep it in mind. We should use adverbs and gerunds if possible, right? Yeah, I had to look up because... what a gerund was. I couldn't remember. I was like, how do I use a gerund? <laughs> exactly. yeah, don't how do be I do intimidated. This? this is just author talk. <laughs> the magic is happening. You can do it. I printed some inspirational posters for you guys. I've How's it going, Hank? It. How's it going, Gwendolyn? <laughs> oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> I'm muting you. I'm muting everything. Headphones right. are off. I did the same thing. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> go. like Kermit the Frog, you know? Go. Oh, I'm setting my timer. I'll meet myself so they can't hear me typing. Isn't it amazing? This is how Pride and Prejudice happened. <laughs> They're doing great. They're doing great. And you all have turn. like at least two whole minutes left. So fuck, really? <laughs> <laughs> at least. He was gonna have a novel. He started like right at three. Mm-hmm. Box set. Box set. <laughs> oh, right, box set. And remember, just because this is five minutes doesn't mean you shouldn't take care of yourself. Remember, st stand, you know, stretch, take the breaks you need, you know, go for a walk, read a haiku for inspiration. Doing excellent, everyone. We have over a minute left. This is exciting. I love it. Yes. Uh, I, I, I finally found it, you guys. And now, <laughs> now, I feel, now I feel like a superstar. <laughs> now he's doing it. <laughs> Round two will be way better for me. This one's getting a little like, Hey, this is weird. This one's don't getting forget, weird. Don't forget, you know, this is, this is just round one of round one. This is just, this is just the first part. The frittata has not been flipped, anyone. I think that's a Gordon Lish uh, line. Yeah. Okay. We have a minute left. So put, put the top on that Frey Tags pyramid, everyone.
Last minute inspiration. The magic is happening. You can do it. <laughs> it's a good unicorn. Hang in there, whatever it takes. All right. 30 seconds remain. Everyone at home, this is a good time to start your story. If you haven't yet, put a good sentence or two down. <laughs> 10 seconds left. Five, four, three, one, two. Ah. I feel like I'm in the Great British Baking Show. Yes, right. hands up, hands up, hands up. Hands up, hands up, hands up, yes. Oh, yeah, you, hands yes. up. Put your Jaren's on the ground. Oh, okay, Jaren's. Well, I don't know how many Jaren's I got in here. I only, I, got, I got one. I only got two Jaren's in. Listen, Will. You guys be like, you got like eight Jaren's, Gwen, like, calm your roll. Yeah, <laughs> roll. exactly. I got, I got two. Now, Jesus. <laughs> okay, you're doing great. We've got our first drafts. We're now going to do what I call a little blanking, a little blanking. blanking. Okay. So okay. copy and paste your story. Just so you have an intact version of the old, terrible version that you just wrote before we. <laughs> I'm turning mine into a book. I am yeah. so, <laughs> so yeah. hooked on this. I so knew much. it. Uh-oh. It's good silo vibes. Okay. So you've got your new version. Mm -hmm. Now. Everyone, we're all writers here. Hugh, Hank, Gwen, and writers at home, go through your story and either highlight mm -hmm. or bracket out mm -hmm. three nouns. Any three nouns in your story. If you are mm -hmm. not sure what a noun is, I wrote up this little <laughs> definition of a noun. Thank God. Can it, be, can it be seen? I'm trying to read it backwards, so it's hard for me. A person, place, or a thing like a sultan. I, I can't read this part backwards. This is getting too hard. Author, audience, moderator, summary. These are all examples of nouns. A noun. Go through and, and highlight in some color or, or just put brackets around three nouns. Okay. Um, when you've got that, mm -hmm. please uh, raise your hand or gesture in some way so I know. How many words are everybody's stories? Listen, can, that's if we have a good a word counter that you could tell me. Mine's remember, like 274. Okay. Remember. You? Uh it is 109. Okay. Yeah. I might have gone a little long. That's fine. That's fine. Can you find three nouns? Can you find three yeah, nouns? Yeah, I got three nouns. All right. Yeah. When do you have three nouns? Oh, yes, nouns. Hugh, do you have three <laughs> nouns? Do you have three yes. nouns? Okay, you yes. got three nouns. Okay, now, same deal. Highlight in a different color if you're so bold and able, or just bracket or whatever. Mm -hmm. Three verbs. Three verbs, everyone. A verb is an action, like a run or jump or swim or, or moan. I got kind of risque there. Hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I. Um, One of those panels. Remember, audience at home, do it. Your masterpiece is is in progress. Okay. Now, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say now. I should I should wait. When you've got it, uh, I don't know. Touch your chin, so I kind of have a sense. Okay. Any three verbs? I'm creating a color coded key. Is anyone else doing that? Yeah, it's tight it's now because they're gonna have like six different colors here. In a it's second. it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. He's he's both faster but also better so far. Okay, here. Yes. Okay. Three adjectives. Three adjectives. That is, boy, a, a brow. I'm reading backwards. A, a a word that describes a noun. That like old or drippy or uh, sweet. Wow, drippy. <laughs> This, you can tell I'm also an author by the fact I was able to pull drippy just, you know, out of my own head. I didn't read that. I thought of that. 
because because rainbows. Okay, so do the same. You all should now have three nouns, three verbs, and three adjectives that are just going to get blanked out soon enough. Uh, nose, can we get a little thumbs up? Thumbs up? Nose, yeah. Oh, he was ahead on this, but now he's behind. Adjectives are, are I don't, tough. I don't use a lot of adjectives. Well, yeah. I, did, I did suggest that, but Hugh did start writing before everyone else. Let's just remember that. What did you get for not listening? I think the I'll tortoise, use two adjectives in my entire story. Tortoise and the hair Hemingway. Okay. I, I had also if had you only got two, you got two. Adverbs. Adverbs. I, I shudder to think if he had two adjectives, how few adverbs well, he has. That is a nice word. thing about adverbs is that I can actually look them up with a search. Well, <laughs> they're often ly words you may yeah. if you're looking for what they are they're the titles of all of hank's books <laughs> um they're a word that describes a verb oh there's one <sighs> like angrily quickly Ooh. and gently this one's tough oh yeah I, I i seem to have intentionally stuck a shit ton of adverbs in this That's yeah. the can i, I can i borrow it. two please can i have three <laughs> listen you can just twenty dollars you can also put a bracket or highlight before one of your verbs if you want and sort of make a space for it right there it's true you pro can tip. Make, yeah. pro tip i have a question i yes, did quick. put a number of verbs in oops um, if we use the, like when the noun, like I had used this noun multiple times in my story, do I change it just the once or do I change it? I all did the it time? so that when I had like, I was had a rep, a, rep, a repetition noun, I did it so that I changed it every time. So Excellent. that it would be, I, I've seen yes. that in a Mad Lib before. Yes. Yeah. We've got a lot of, uh, of adverb, uh, requests from, from. From from Hank. Hank, do you have a? Do you want to just? Well, anyway, well he'll he'll put them out there soon. I've got don't, you, don't worry. Silently, um, yeah. uselessly is yeah. in mine. Yes, that's that, gonna be a useful that's, one. That's his wife Catherine's book. Uh, <laughs> reluctant. Okay, so gerund, gerund, that is an ing word. It's a it's oh, like a, a verb that's turned into a noun with ing. But don't worry about that. Just look for ing. Asking, pleading, skateboarding. Oh. Yeah, there's a gerund. Those are That's some gerunds. Sweet, all, sweet all good gerund. things that I know um, aliens do a lot. Totally. Well, I got two, two of those. Okay, Whoa. I'm sorry. Probing. <laughs> uh, is, that, is that better? Uh, like I said, it's going to be one of those panels. Yeah. I see. Okay. okay. Being misunderstood. Being with Moisturizing. The <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> It's very, very dry in space. Yeah. Uh, or it, or it yeah. gets the hose. So, <laughs> have you guys all done it? Is it all? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are yes. You, have you blanked no, it all up? Yes. It is okay. all blanked up. Okay. It's all blanked up. So now we are going to fill in the blanks. I can't wait. The I really hope people at home are doing this. Yeah. It's uh. They've, a lot of people have left their homes. They, this is, this is how I'm writing homes. all my novels from now on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so these are, we are going, the mashup begins now. We're going to fill in those blanks with real words from Hugh, Hank, and Gwen's books selected by the authors themselves, which means it's not, it's not plagiarism, it's collaboration. Okay. And they're, and but, they're getting but, some. From but we're other. still going to sue each other, right? That's, that's yeah. yeah. But only going to make fun. my money. Yeah, fun <laughs> suing. Recreational so, suits. Vanna White is my my uh, my my great terrible grandmother. This round one words. Round run words. Is this? Is okay. my got it? Okay. Round yeah, one got. words. Okay. okay. I think most of these are in in Hugh, Hank, Gwen order. But if you doubt that, you'll just see the words. Who cares? Round one yeah. nouns. So take these nouns in this order. I would advise, but you know, don't try to make it make too much sense. Mm -hmm. For your first three blanks for your nouns. Okay. Silo. Robot. Sharks. Is it the right height? Um, Silo. Robot. Sharks. <laughs> okay. Is uh, there an audience comment that Hank that you wear the same four shirts to every attend every event? And I'm just like, if he has four shirts, he's not a real author. That you can tell he's in other media. That's a lot of shirts. For <laughs> authors, we only we only have one shirt. Um, Hugh doesn't even have a shirt. So he's got a t-shirt. He's got a t-shirt. So I'm just saying that's a multi that's a multimedia, that's a producer if he's got four different shirts. 
All right. Silo. Got it. Robot. I'm in. Sharks. Your verbs. Oh, Gwen, are you ready? Are you ready for verbs? Ready. Right. Sorry, I'm a little Hugh, slow. Hugh, are you ready for verbs? Let's do it. Yell. Ready? Tweet. And butcher. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that, this all turned out very well. Where's my other verb? Hugh, we have, a, we have a question if you want to identify your unidentified location. Mine? Yeah, this is an audience question. It's, it's uh, while you're while you're, oh, while you're writing. I'm I am on uh, uh, level one thirty two of the silo. Yeah, he's on level one thirty two of silo. Yell, tweet, butcher. Okay, Hugh, where are you? You color coded it. Did it work for you? So Good. far. Okay, you're there. You're there. I need some signals. Adjectives. Rusty. Fuzzy. Dilapidated. Oh, actually, Believe it or not, works. I had multiple authors sub submit dilapidated. <laughs> so, um, we need to get a thesaurus. That is just where we are. Okay. It's a good word. It's a great word. I wonder what, I wonder if Thank you can you lapidate for the sign something. Note. Sign up a little more. Rusty, fuzzy, and dilapidated. Hugh, can, can my words be seen on screen? Yep. Okay. Perfectly. Getting some comments. I can't see them, but I'll, I'll do my best. Thank you for, for being with me, audience. Rusty, fuzzy, and dilapidated. It comes from throwing stones dilapidated. Oh, wow. Scattering and throwing stones. I bet fuzzy doesn't come from throwing stones. No. Unless they're moss uh, covered. <laughs> Gwen, do you got it? You got them in? Oh. Are you mashed, Hank? Mashed, Hugh, are you mashed? Okay. Now again, this is this it always I like I like choke up when I always read the adverbs. There's something about adverbs. They get a bad rap from Hemingway, but look at this. Mm -hmm. Bravely. Oh, that's wow, that this got this vividly, got way better. Bravely, tenderly, vividly. I can't type. I win. Right. Hugh, do you have him filled in? Yes. Gwen, do you have him filled in? Okay. Hugh, did we interrupt you? Sorry. No. Nope. Okay, sorry. Gerens, cleaning, dreaming, and hobbling. And I don't know if that means hobbling in the sort of sabotage sense or in the uh, has been, you know, limping sense. So we'll just have to see <laughs> in these stories. Cleaning. That works. That works. That's Dream, better. Yeah. Okay. It's all <laughs> edits are, you know, the difference between an amateur and a professional writer is whether they can take their edits like a good boy <laughs> and girl. Okay. <laughs> all right. You're doing good. You're doing good. Um, wow. Okay. So hopefully you all got those in there. Mm -hmm. Everyone at home, please. We're, so we're going to gather your stories, too. We're going to try to make a post-event page with these stories. You have now got yours filled in in collaboration with these guys. We're going to hear theirs. But consider email your stories to us at Montana. Not Authors, you don't have to do this, although you certainly can. Please email your stories to us at MontanaBookFestival at gmail.com with the subject line, fill in the blanks. And then we'll have your amazing audience stories too. And it's good to have a diversity of views on the subject of alien abduction. Mm -hmm. I've on that topic. I've already uploaded mine to the Kindle store. It's 99 cents <laughs> if anybody wants yes. to read it. 4.99. Yes. Okay. Uh, and we're going to do this again, everybody. So I'm not uh, greedy, Hank. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, Hugh, please describe your most recent alien abduction written in collaboration with Hank Gwen and yourself, which is a real sci-fi fantasy twist that I, you know, yeah. you're, you're <laughs> your own co-author. This is why you never send Hank for milk. The robot <laughs> is vividly rusty. He butchered the saucer. Did you know we call them saucers because earthlings serve their sharks 
milk in these. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> humans used to tweet their coffee bravely from the silo. The surface area let it cool more. Now they just use it to yell the spills. Cleaning of dreaming, back to Hank and the milk conundrum. I sent him down for milk, which means tenderly grab a cow. What he brought back was just the udders. Hoppingly, he left a fuzzy of a corpse behind. What the hell, I asked. Hey, I thought you wanted 2%, Hank said. Oh, let it rain. That oh. made a fair amount of sense. Yeah, uh, it kind of I'm, did. The, I'm, the I'm, robot I'm, and Rusty went really well together. Yeah, I had the same situation occur. I was happy with that. Um, well. It's actually better than what I wrote originally. <laughs> Why are people what was surprised? I, what, was, what did I do to that cow? Yeah. You left a, you mutilated it. That's what okay. aliens do. They go down for yeah. milk. But when you send Hank, he ends up only grabbing the udders. And it's, um, I he use takes my 2% of the cow. Laser hand. <laughs> On that topic, Hank, uh, could uh -huh. you please describe your most recent alien abduction? Yes. <clears throat> I can't believe we all stink. We all still think they're dreams. The idea that we, we would need to spend eight hours a night in our own rusty little silos. <laughs> and that while we did it, we'd have these vivid fuzzy hallucinations as if that's a thing a brain would normally do. But we still yell it. We still think we're bravely clinging to our own needs and not the needs of others. They use us. We are their robot and we're a good robot, a powerful robot. <laughs> Every night they own our consciousness. They don't come for our bodies. That would be dilapidated. What, <laughs> what would they treat with this meat? How, would they, <laughs> how could you imagine anything more tenderly uninteresting? They get our minds, a third of our lives. They live through us, hobbling every one of us day after day while we vividly rest. They give us the sharks we need so that there will be more of us, exponentially more every generation. They butcher us. They harvest our minds, but only a third of it. The rest, well, that they give to us. Oh, that was actually really amazing, and it's hard to tell those any replacements. Right? It was like, yeah, it, that is a day three RNC convention speech. If I've ever heard one, that was that was beautiful. That was that was. Except, what was going to deliver that one? Giving us sharks made less of us, not more of us. Wow. Yeah. No, uh, we we do something useful with the sharks. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, the, the tweet. What would why what would they tweet with this meat? Is uh, <laughs> is is what doctor you know Doctor Seuss lives. Every time we tweet, uh, we tweet with meat. That's yeah. true. Uh, Gwen. Okay. Uh, you, <laughs> just wondering. I was wondering. Could you tell me about your most recent alien abduction? Yeah. Yes, I would love to. Here we okay. go. Okay, mine doesn't have any robots in it. Oh wait, yes it does. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does now. The sky was dark and full of terrors when the rusty light yelled from the fuzzy skies. The man was in a silo. He tweeted the lo uh, wait, the man was in a silo when he saw the robot cleaning upon the pod of sharks. He butchered <laughs> with, with dilapidated trepidation as the light grew and began to scoop up the sharks dreaming with the one that had escaped from SeaWorld. Ah, the bravely shark's zipper. The mammal had been in the news tenderly. And the man was amazed that the sharks had managed to make it this far. Yes, it was hobbling to see the vividly ship zipper with the, see the vividly zipper than the aliens. He wondered where the aliens were taking the sharks and if it would be a better world than this. Oh, well, that's beautiful. Wow. wow, what were the sharks before they were sharks? Dolphins. Oh, right. They were mammals. <laughs> and they had okay. a pod. That's why I was like, this is not accurate anymore. You would know that if you weren't out killing cows with your laser hands. Yeah, yeah same thing with the milk. Um, well, we laughed, uh, we cried, we killed, and it's time to move on to round two. Okay, so new, 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 new uh, blank, new, new, new sheet of virtual paper. Okay. Uh, get ready, uh, audience. Um, yeah, what were God. the sharks before they were sharks? Wow, that beautiful. made me so nervous. Yeah, so glad, <laughs> glad you're you know performance. You have anxiety performance. It's the other way around. You did great. Mm. Um, so we're gonna write again. Get a new writing window open. Are you ready, Gwen? Okay, she's ready. Hank, are you ready? 
cue. Yeah, I'm ready for my okay. anxiety okay. performance. Okay, there you go. Okay. The year is 2120. You're an interstellar gossip columnist. For mm, the fuck. next five minutes, please describe last night's Mars Gala. An interstellar gossip columnist. Jeremy, why have I not left the star system? If I'm an interstellar, I'm an, am I an interplanetary gossip columnist or an interstellar gossip columnist? You're visiting your mother and you happen to, she wants to go to the gala. You're, you think it's just tr wrote trash, but you have matching red dresses and you're mm. going. Okay. Wait, your what mother, am I writing about? Hold it I up. I was writing high. again. Gosh. I don't know night, how old Mars your mother is. And remember, you'll be 100 years older than you are now. So, you know, just maybe Mars is anyway. If there's water on Mars, there can be rainbows, right? And unicorns. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but a nice way if you're having trouble starting <laughs> is it was a dark and stormy night. You know, that's a nice way to, okay. This night was dark and full of terror, so counted. <clears throat> We've got a special bonus guest in the audience, Tom Benson, executive director of Arts Missoula. Thank you for helping make the magic happen here and across the festival. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Arts Missoula. And we're, and we're, expecting, we're expecting these two stories from you too, Tom. Feel the pressure. Audience, it's not too late for me to start the timer. I've not read a gossip column ever. <laughs> what are they like? I feel like I recently read your book, which has a effing gossip column essentially in it. Think about the, the coverage of, of Mr. Peter in Puerto Rico. Okay? Oh, yeah, okay. Buddy, it can, be, of... it can just be glossy. Mm -hmm. It's a great use of form for adjectives, <laughs> adverbs, and gerunds. doing great i don't know what generation of the kardashians will be on at that point but i take it for you to tell us you have gosh i'd say two whole minutes left And again, you know, you guys can correct me on the science, but I think Mars is the planet that's the littler one and Venus is like the bigger one. And there may be some other ones in there. I think they got rid of all the other ones. It's just Earth, Venus, and Mars at this point. The sun's no longer a planet, apparently. Just got rid of it. You can tell Hank's in the mode. He's, he's, not, he's not rising to my, my science baiting at all. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Oh, uh, yes. Uh, okay. A minute left. What is the drama? The hot gas. 
in the low graph. Low graph stands for low low gravity. Yeah. All right. Again, Arthur C. Clarke, everybody, Ray Bradbury, or Sela K. Le Guin. This is this is just how it happened. You know, one one hitting the letter D and realizing you meant the letter S at, at a time. Fourteen seconds. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, you're not able to do seven thousand words again. All right, here we go. Six, eleven. Five, four, three, baking show, baking show, <laughs> hands soon, hands soon, hands soon. So, I mean, mine are up, but I'm not this done. This is the point. This is the point <laughs> where everybody goes, oh, shoot, I forgot again to do any adverbs. Okay, so uh, now you should perhaps, I won't say you should, should, uh, I don't, I don't want to should words. Uh, but you might remember what we did last time, and we're going to do it again. Three nouns, three nouns. Here's a noun. Giraffe, golf ball, whiskey, tango, foxtrot. These are, these are, uh, these are nouns. Yes. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with the story now. What was Bird. the thing we were doing? <laughs> okay, nouns, three nouns, three nouns. Yeah, right. Gwen's got it. Gwen's got right. it. Gwen's got it. Gwen's got it. Hugh, do you have three nouns? Yeah, I'm working on the verbs. All right, All right. this guy. I don't have many words to choose from here. Verbs, verbs. You can always you can always put them in and blank them out or, or put a blank where the verb is. I think I might have to. Real, real pros know just to start blanking. Three verbs. Verbs I have. Yes. The red carpet was sh carnally sumptuous is an opening line from one of our awesome audience members. Nice. Um, adjective, adjective. Three adjectives. Get them going. I see a question. Am I the person on chat? No, I'm not on chat. I, I don't even have a keyboard. Adjectives. Three adjectives. All right. All right. Three adverbs. That's right. I just skipped ahead. I'm, I'm, uh, at, yeah. And remember, we're all learning what an adverb is. This event has been sponsored by your fourth grade teacher. <laughs> it's a word describing a verb, L-Y words. Some people say silly, but it's just, that's not one. All right. Uh, gerunds, gerunds. Those are those, you know, verbal nouns, everybody, right? Uh, I N G geruntative, I think is a fun adjective. I hope you guys have used that. <laughs> Hugh, you are so calm and collected. Did you do this? Are you done? Are you here? Are you doing the, are you designing the box set? Gotta, to get all your focus. I've got, man, you, all I have, all I have are words from the, uh, you're doing great. You're doing great. Don't talk yourself down. Don't talk yourself down. You can do this. All, this is the all my words are now highlighted. So everything you give me is going to create the story. That's where we are. Excellent. All I have, yeah. What do any of us have but words, you? Come on. You've given so much. Okay. Okay. Wait, did we do what? Did we just do uh, ad, gerunds? Is that where we are? Yeah. Oh, nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and gerunds. Okay. Well, it's I happening. Hope I did that right. Okay. Good work. Good work, everybody. <laughs> Ding is not a gerund. Ding. <laughs> I just want to say that I've had a lot of, a lot of people start, you know, talking about Bing cherries and stuff like that. It's not, they're not all gerund, not all words, but I, anyway, 
You're ready. You're ready. It's happening. Round two words. Are you ready? I said that, but I realize it's just not going to work if you're not actually ready. Are you, are you ready? 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 I'm ready. I'm okay. sorry. I don't care about anyone but Gwen. If Gwen's ready, we're doing this. Let's go. Okay. I'm ready. Sheriff, monkey, wasteland. Okay. It's not that hard, people. You just put a bunch of blanks and then fill it in with Sheriff Monkey Wasteland. <laughs> okay, that worked. This is easier. I figured out my color coding system. Higher, higher. I got it. Okay, I'm good. Can these words be seen? Okay, Sheriff yes. Monkey Wasteland. Verbs. You guys probably already know what they are, but I'll just say them anyway. It's not intuitive what three verbs from their entire books these authors would have suggested. They are, of course, punch, decentralize, and spackle. <laughs> punch, decentralize, spackle. Exactly. And this is, that is the mission of the Montana Book Festival. So it's beautiful that we could, we could do that through your words. Adjectives, adjectives. Oh, these are going to be, you didn't realize that you were writing an interstellar gossip column or, uh, I don't know, Hank told me, whatever, uh, an interplanetary gossip <laughs> rag. Sorry. Uh, claustrophobic, fiery, and glossy. And these authors, they're not, they've stopped even giggling. First round, they were giggling. Now the words are just, are they're just fitting in so what seamlessly you know, can, and or in Hugh's case. A, we have some kind of time pressure now. These are the only actual words in Hugh's thing. So he's like, it's as funny as it's going to be. <laughs> All right. Yes. Claustrophobic, fiery, glossy. All right. We're at to the adverbs this is the part where we write Hank's new book or we the, 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 the title the, at least that's the title the title that's the you have the title it writes i mean you know the sun also rises etc right war and peace he had the outline okay <laughs> tediously haphazardly grossly Yes. Yes. I like it. We've all, we've all been on zoom so long that we don't know if our thumbs are up anymore. What? Okay. So there it is. <laughs> Hugh, you're there. Okay. Jaren's. Jaren's. Pairing. Collaborating. Hallucinating. Do you, do you remember your, your first uh, Mad Libs experience? Anyone? You know, if anyone wants to uh, type that in, you know, was, I remember kind of, I kept looking for spin the bottle and I kept finding Mad Libs. That was my middle school experience, unfortunately. Uh, I don't know if anyone else did it better. All right. Yes. Ra pairing, collaborating, hallucinating. Okay. They're there. They're there. It's happening. It's happening. Gwen. You want me to go? Well, you know, in case we run out of time, we just want to make sure. <laughs> that we start with Gwen. Woo! Um, sorry, I just got super. I was like, because because it's N, right? That's your middle initial, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just realized if we if we because it's Gwen and I read it, you know, but Gwen and Nix, I just realized there's three N's in a row. I know. It's like I just got I got like I got I got swept <laughs> away with that knowledge. Okay. Too many N's. Can anyone find three consecutive letters in a row in Hank or Hugh's name? If you can, <laughs> let us know. Feel free to invent new middle initials. Okay, so Gwen. All right. Uh, okay. What happened last night on the Red Planet? All right, America here we go. Demands answers. Exciting news, Martian queens. Last <laughs> night was as hot as Mercury. Yes, we are that close to the sun. When Neptune's claustrophobic sheriff showcased her best tediously monkey. It was all the gas pool ha haphazardly rage when she punched off the crater carpet and mewed those fiery lips at her repairing fans. Shit. 
<laughs> want some of that collaborating glam for cheap try it out pluto style yes fans pluto will be a planet if intergalactic wasteland has anything to say about it oh no martian queens did you decentralize how local martian king spackled to show his grossly colors to the alien robot that appeared from the blue planet earth it was a fight about to happen stay tuned queens for our next gross glossy hallucinating display Wow. I'm gonna that was to amazing. The sentence started, Shit. oh no. I want to hear that one again a little slower. What was the oh no oh, sentence? Oh, sorry. No, that's what? fine. What was it? The last sentence? The oh no sentence. Oh no. Oh, uh, let me find it. Oh no, Martian Queens. Did you decentralize how local Martian King spackled to show his grossly colors to the alien robot that appeared from the blue planet Earth? It That's was a fight I about to said, happen. But I wasn't sure. I'm glad that you repeated. <laughs> Something about that sentence definitely makes my Poetry. brain wires stop working. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that would not pass the Turing test. That sentence. So um Mr. Green, Mr. Green, are you, okay. are you uh yeah, you yeah. Know, the man in the middle? It's the year twenty one twenty, and I'm an interstellar gossip columnist. In attention. <laughs> Uh, in attendance this night was every kind of Shristine, and not uh, a one of them seemed excited to punch each other. <laughs> These claustrophobic people, who I am unused to repairing because I tend to spend my evenings on Alpha Centauri and my afternoons on Lamborghini, uh, but in the sheriff system, but the, but the sheriff system appears to be tediously spackled by Shristines now, at least in Martian fiery society. They rarely exceed three feet tall, but while you'd think they'd be joined together by their similarity, they are each frustratingly unhappy with each other. Shristine 23817 was hallucinating about whether or not Shristine 40U28 had really so haphazardly decentralized her monkey, or had in fact not been surprised at all. Uh, <laughs> I find the sentences with decentralized are the ones that fuck with me. Uh, that's... And I'm not, I've, it, it's very okay. nearly done. And no, Tristine 9674 <laughs> grossly let Tristine 40U28 know. The wasteland was glossy and unpleasant with a lot of collaborating and yelping and not nearly as much society couture as one had been led to expect. Mm, 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 mm. Love it. It's Love got way it. better after the Mad Lips. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, yes. uh, that was that was beautiful. And yeah, let's let's all watch out for those sheriff systems. They're a problem. Uh, decentralized. So as, as well as Spackle, of course. Hugh, uh, what happened last night on a, a planet not far from Earth? What a fiery wasteland. All the bejeweled <laughs> sheriffs in their grossly glossy dresses and all the monkeys and haphazardly hallucinating tuxes. But Zandu had to spackle uninvited with tediously claustrophobic pants on. And the shocking news of her recent divorce decentralized the entire affair, a hallucinating crater of repairing rumor. Uh, that that actually did happen last night. So that's yeah. Uh, yeah if you had your well, that's the thing. I find all a... pants claustrophobic these days. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where you hallucinate. Yeah. Well, and they're yeah. all and they're all uninvited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we've got some audience suggestions to put some line breaks in there and publish it as poetry. I think you, I think I think we had a solid stanza in there. I think Gwendolyn's was like an E.E. E. Cummings poem. <laughs> Like. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Hot as mercury. We're well, like, we ha I think we may have time for for a magical round three. Are you are you are you Do feeling we? it or not? It took us. It took let's us. Okay. Know what, what's going to happen is let's not and say we did. <laughs> It's, hey, you're, yeah. the, you're the authors. You're we the can, authors. We can open it up to some conversation. Let's do some. Yeah, let's, we, do some let's do some. I, let's, sure. let's hear some questions. Let's do it. We're definitely going to go over if we do another one. Well, yeah. that depends if we give you the full five minutes, of course. Yeah, right. please. Everyone, <laughs> and, and to, until while we're waiting on questions from them, should we ask questions of each other? Yes. Yeah. Sure. That'd be wonderful. Gwendolyn, what's? Uh, I want to read your book now. What is? What's it about? Oh yes, my book, Sharks of the Wasteland. It just came out like at the beginning of September. That's right, I have it handy. Um, it's kind of like a, a scenario post-apocalyptic future where like the Yellowstone caldera exploded and how it like transformed the United States. Um, and actually takes place in New York where there's kind of created 
pe the people have kind of created these tribal systems and there's like an evil facility that might be like trying to create mutated humans to survive the wasteland toxicity of the outside um and then enter and there our, are sharks um ish ah. it's a <laughs> metaphor <laughs> it's, it sounds it's awesome Thank you. I, I just read a, uh, an article saying that that uh, volcano is due to go any millennia now. Mm, any millennia now. There you go. If someone <laughs> wants a signed book, Gwendolyn, is there a best uh, vehicle for that? Can can you can they sort of wrangle something? I don't know from our official bookseller, Fact and Fiction Books, or through you or something. Well, yep, both Fact and Fiction and um, through me personally. Yeah, and then um, also my publisher, Outland Entertainment, also has books for sale on their website, so you can go mm -hmm. ahead and buy them right there. All right. Nice. Uh, we've got questions. Do you have any tips for writing a story in five minutes? Or did you learn anything about your writing process from this my, exercise? My tip is not to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that you, you like, hey, here's the situation. Uh, I think nine times out of 10, you're going to come up with some real trash. But then maybe there's something in there that'll be good. Uh, I think there's something to the, uh, the perfect pot uh, allegory when you say, when you tell a student to make a perfect pot, they make a much worse pot than when you tell a student to make a hundred bad pots. Mm. I like that. And I would just when? say like, just do it. Like, I mean, write what comes to you, my, your mind naturally. Like right now, like the first one was really hard for me, but the second one, I was like, I, like that one was easy. Cause I could find my voice and I just let it spew out. Like as long as you yeah. have something on the paper to work with, you'll be good it's worse it's, when it's, it's yeah it's, it's finding it's finding a hook to hook into um yeah. and with this last one i hooked into the episode of uh selling sunset that i watched last night <laughs> yes at, well at the Mar instead of being instead of at the mars gala i love it <laughs> um we've got another question which is what is the book that has helped you what is a book that has helped you through the last few months i hmm. i I like to plug a book. Yeah. Um, Colson Whitehead's The Nickel Boys is one of the uh, most beautiful books I've read in a long, long time. Uh, just finished it this week. And it's wild that he wrote it last year because it seems so prescient and on topic. And if you just want to um, soak yourself in some beautiful prose and an incredible story and incredible character, it's only about 200 pages. Again, it's called The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. And it is uh, my number one recommendation to everyone right now. Mm, great. Awesome. Uh, I've, I've just uh, read the third book in the Lady Astronaut series, which I find it's great. It doesn't take place now. It takes place in a universe that is in an, in an America that is in many ways worse than ours, which is nice um, uh, because uh, you know, a lot of times I feel like it couldn't be, um, but also the characters are really great. It's like it's it's in the '60s and it's uh, a greatly accelerated space program due to uh, the coming and rapidly rapidly increasing inhabitability of Earth, um, and uh, and the, the the ladies are just so great and uh, it's very satisfying. Great mysteries, very compelling, and very like separated. <laughs> And I don't have to feel like it's about now. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. Gwen? Um, so I'm going to plug two. Um, I'm also involved in the Fact and Fiction Book Club. If any of you guys want to join, we're going to be reading The Nickel Boys, I think, in a couple months. Nice. Um, so one of the first book I read recently with them was a memoir, actually. And I don't read a lot of memoirs. Um, about It's called Bitterroot. And um, it was, it's about a transracial adoption experience. And it was fantastic. Like it was, it, especially coming from Montana, like it's, it definitely hits a lot of points in, of, of interest. That's really cool. Um, and then something that I've come back to time and time again um, is Sunny Moraine's short story collection called Singing With All My Skin and Bone. And um, I think the best thing I love about that is um, it's really lyrical. It's got beautiful prose in it. And it's also kind of a small publisher who I like small published books sometimes. So I like to read that and support them as well. Love it. Awesome. I want to join that book club and, and for that discussion on the Nickel Boys. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, just email the Fact and Fiction and they've got, they'll sign you up. It's it's a really great group of people and it's fun. They have good we'll, discussion discussions. we Will do. We'll see what level you're at by that point. Uh, can, I, can I ask Hank what all the signatures behind him on the wall are? Oh, yeah. That I was doing a panel recently with uh, my co-creator of a show that I produced. And so I put the cast poster back there. 
That's awesome. the, all the signed Lizzie Bennet Diaries cast and crew. Yes. Very cool. Audience answered it before Hank could. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got um, an audience just lined to share from the writing. But now, nice. But now this small, soft, pale creature was here and it wouldn't stop tweeting. So I feel like that's what I feel like that's what the dolphins are saying about us. Uh, the sharks, know, the shark, the sharks. That's what the sharks are saying about They're human mammals beings. And they pods They're like this small, soft, pale creatures here, and it won't stop eating. Totally. They just won't. No matter how many signals we give them that it is not working out, yes. they will not stop tweeting. Exactly. I think, With their I think that's a subplot. There's that's sort of oppression subplot in the Hitchhiker's books. So kind of the galaxy. So um, question. Uh, maybe last question. How much is of your sci-fi is based on what you think could happen from now versus what you hope could happen in the future? I don't know if that's a utopia versus dystopia or hmm. uh, or your your imagination or extrapolation question. Yeah, I never think about what I hope hope for when I'm writing. I feel like that that wouldn't result in a great story. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh look, everything turned out okay. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I do think a lot about what I think could happen. Or or honestly, I think sci-fi is mostly about writing about right now, usually. Mm -hmm. It's like it's writing about stuff we believe to be true today rather than the future, oftentimes. Sharks, as Gwen said, it's all a metaphor. If, yeah. if everything is not a metaphor, you're not paying attention. That's my <laughs> that's my very long bumper sticker. I just need a bigger car. Hugh, um, what would you say? Yeah, the same for me. I write, um, I'm, I'm trying to satirize what's going on around me. But um, I think um, to expand on what Hank was saying, if you write what you hope will happen, there's very little conflict. You know, I think most of us wish everything was just hunky dory and that's not what we want to read. So I, I try to look for uh, create conflict and like harrowing scenarios that I've never will be a part of and hope humanity does not trend toward, but that makes for a, a more gripping read. Mm -hmm. Gwen? Um, I'd say like utopias for me to write, I haven't really written one yet, but they seem insidious in some ways. Mm -hmm. Like even if they come off as a utopia, they end up being a dystopia in some ways. Um, so that's that's kind of a fun thing to, to write about, but it also kind of requires a little bit more of um, insidiousness to it. Like you're not writing about like my book, like you're not writing about an explosion that's changed the world, right? You're, you're writing about maybe like policies that undermine you. So I think it's two different types of, of work. Um, for, for mine, like, I don't, I usually like to think of the worst case scenario and go from there. I think, like, dystopians, like, darker fiction kind of creates stronger bonds between characters, and maybe a utopian one is more like, we have to get out of this scenario, or kind of like a revelation, uh, you know, take off the rose tinted glasses. Awesome. Thank you again to our sponsors, A&E Design, Montana Public Radio, and the Whitefish Review, our official event bookseller, factandfictionbooks.com. Thank you, audience. Everyone who registered for this event should get an email once we have that page set up with audience submitted stories. But to that end, if you haven't sent in your stories, the address is montanabookfestival at gmail.com. And thank you, authors. You are great writers, but you are perhaps even better sports. You're so brave <laughs> and beautiful uh, to do this. So, uh, you know. Uh, thank you all so much. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the festival, everybody. And I will slowly have us wave goodbye until we are disappeared. Thank you. Thank you for coming.